and this is after a bit you know where they stay just you know briefly a few if you like functional barriers which which they get along the way one is as david said context you know context is is absolutely key as he said the israeli position the israeli arguments require a deeper reading um, if a reporter stands in front of the fence, what they might call the wall, although it's, as we know, only 3% of the, the whole defensive fence, they are not giving the background. 220 Israelis killed in 2002 and the reason why it was built. Um, you know, this is, this is absolutely key and it's, it's just not there. It's just easier to slide into the, the message of, you know, oppressive victim. Choice of interviewee is another great example. We are approached by journalists all the time for sources. And what we've been approached for more than anything else over the last few months, the most extreme settler you can find on a hilltop. You know, not representative of Israel, average Israeli, middle Israel, certainly, you know, not even representative of the general settler community. But that is the prison. That's what they want, the extremist on the hilltop against the Palestinian victim, not the Hamas terrorist um, with the Israeli victim. You know, we have many people watching this online. I see you making friends as you continue to go on, also making some enemies as well. We're going to take some questions from the web to, to hear what people are thinking about what you're saying. We're going to open up the panel now, now that we've gotten to know you a little bit better. And I'd like to begin on the topic of social media. Let's talk about on-the-job knowledge and social media. Now, Rod, you work in television. David, you work in print. Marcus, you work on all mediums. But David, as you mentioned, the website has now become where all the traffic is going on. So we want to know, now that most of your audience is internet-based, blogs, Facebook, how is the fact that today's audience is so connected to the internet affecting your work? Now, David, we'll start with you. Yeah, um, first of all, I think there's, there, are, there is a, a challenge involved because you, you're running into the, um, the conflicting demands, if you like, of, uh, of speed and accuracy, um, where... Um, where the, 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 the real-time effect, where the need to have information right away, by definition, is going to compromise accuracy. As somebody who comes from a sort of traditional daily journalistic background in the last few years, you know, has, has had to uh, grapple with and enjoy the benefits of uh, um, the Internet, that's a big issue for you. Uh, traditional media, you would take time, you would check your sources, you would um, look for more than one source of information, you would write and rewrite and polish and then you would have the luxury of you know, producing your material and having it read the next morning. Now, in today's world, you're responding immediately. You're, uh, you, you don't have the opportunity to uh, dig as deeply always as you might want to, certainly with an initial story. You don't have the opportunity to polish as much as you might want to uh, before other people are reading your media. Uh, and that's a big challenge. It's a, it's a big challenge for traditional media online, uh, um, complicated by the fact that you have people who have no commitment to trying to be accurate and responsible and polished and good, who are simply bashing stuff out there on the, on the web. And therefore, there's a, if you like, there's a, a much greater reliance on the, the, um, the discrimination, the, the wisdom of readers, of surfers. Um, and I think, you know, I think the consumers are well are learning to grapple with new media. I think a few years ago it was very hard maybe for people to discriminate between credible sources of media online and not credible sources of media online. I think there's a process going on where people are learning to distinguish and after a while will, will, will have been burned sufficient times by, a, by an outlet that is not credible. I don't think there's any long-term gain in that. But you're still, you're up against all those challenges. And just coming, uh, um, uh, adding a little bit to take, a, to take us into the area where, where Marcus was talking about, which we haven't quite got to yet, you know, I'm, Marcus is kind of in, in, the, in the gap between, if you like, independent media and the Israeli government, the official position. I mean, you, could, you might want to define it differently. From my point of view, working in the independent media, it is a constant source of, of horrific amazement to me how spectacularly inept official Israel is, both in terms of traditional media and emphatically in terms of new media. And, and the more you Im uh, 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 investigate and look into social media, the more you recognize sort of the criminal failings of official Israel to understand the second battlefield at all, to understand what's going on in traditional and in new media. We're going to get to that second battlefield in, in just a little bit, but I'd like to know, Arad, do you find your viewers to be smarter today than they were ever, that they're much smarter now? I tend to give them credit uh, for that, uh, for, for being more informed. Uh, I, I, I share a, a, a David's uh, perception of uh, the context. I don't know how much context they have. I'm trying to give them context in, in, in my slot on TV, 
Uh, but the, the fact, because I think that the facts are known to them through the internet, uh, be it uh, 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 credible sources or not, and, 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 and I'm trying to put it all into, into context. This is why in my journalistic work, uh, the principle that I'm, I'm trying to, to follow is journalistic integrity. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, 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 to follow the, the, the old world's journalist work in the new media framework. And I think we give too much uh, uh, of an emphasis to this uh, new media uh, uh, impact on, 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 on the audience because uh, uh, many people are working during the day. They don't have the luxury to sit here and talk about things we love and enjoy as, 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 as we do or as a certain uh, percentage of the population uh, do. The cashier at the supermarket, the bus driver, the, the building builder, uh, 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 the production worker, they all come home in the evening and they want to see the, 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 the news wrapped properly in a way, in, in a credible way that they can follow. And this is what I am trying to give to them. Bearing in mind the flow of information that buzzes through the ear during the day. Uh, you're talking about the common man, people, the working man. Many of us find ourselves on the internet all day long. Mm -hmm. I know I check my email probably 10 times a day. I'm sure all of you do as well. Uh, Marcus, how do all of these new forces affect your work with journalists? Because you're sort of on the other side, and David mentioned you're also on the governmental side. Tell me about how that affects your work. Well, I would just actually like to, if you like, reinforce um, Arad's point. According to our research, 80% of um, people in America are still getting their information from the mainstream media. Um, now, that might be the Jerusalem Post on the net, um, rather than the Jerusalem Post print copy, but they are relying on qualified, experienced journalists like, like these gentlemen here to get their information, not from a blogger and not from a, a friend or somebody else on the internet. So, so that's a key point. Nobody's going out of business. In yeah, that sense. Uh, if I may aid, uh, yeah. add, uh, add and aid, <laughs> <laughs> a small sentence here. Yeah. We are using the internet as a platform mm -hmm. for the principles we believe in. Sorry. And the second thing that I, that I would like to do is actually put my finger on another form of, if you like, new media, um, because it's new to us, and that is um, the emerging um, Pan-Arabic media. Um, this is a, a, a fascinating um, part of growth which we don't necessarily spend so much time on, but Al Jazeera, Al Khora, Al Arabiya, um, you know, the three major ones, but, but LBC, so many other networks, Pan-Arabic networks, which are new, albeit state-owned, practically all uh, Saudi Arabia, except, of course, um, Al Jazeera, which is uh, Qatari, um, broadcasting all over the Arab world. Now, there is an enormous culture of hate in the Arab world. There are views, according to our research, of Israelis and Jews, which would horrify everybody here and anybody who, who's following this on the Internet. And we have these medium available to talk directly to the Arab world. Um, through Al Jazeera, through um, Al Khora and Al Arabiya, and also Al Quds Al Arabi and, and, and Shark Al Assad, and uh, you know other other print media. This is this is new. This is new media, and there are 350 million Arabs out there who we need to speak to. The, the Israel Project is doing that. Other organisations um, need to be thinking about that too, because it is um, an extremely important audience an audience we can reach through new media, and an audience which we really have to shift minds on. You mentioned the pan-Arabic networks. I'd like to know, when you go out and cover a story, Arad, and you are uh, covering it from the local angle, what is your interaction like with the foreign journalists that are covering the same stories? Well, we are all friends. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I was never uh, 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 had a, a bad approach from a, fe a, a, a fellow uh, a journalist. I was ignored by some once they received these kind of information from their own governments. Uh, and then I, I became friendly with them. I've got lots of friends from Al Jazeera, from Al Khura, from Al Arabiya, from various uh, Iranian uh, uh, networks where, where, where we meet on, on, on the international uh, uh, side. They are not very happy to be seen with me publicly. Not to be, I, I cannot interview them. They won't co 